in order to make sure that everyone understands the distinction between marginal profit and profit and how to draw marginal lines I've decided to present an extended example. Suppose for a hypothetical firm the relationship between profit and a quantity of output looks like this. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph marginal profit. After we get done, you'll understand that marginal profit is, in what way marginal profits are different from total profits, and why economists like to talk about marginal profit. What's the big deal of marginal profit? And now, although I've put profit on the vertical axis, what I'm actually about to engage in is just a mathematical exercise. It really doesn't have anything to do with economics. It's just showing how you get from the total value of some function, you could have just called it f of x, to the marginal value of that function. Suppose I need to extend one of these axes over here. So what we'll do is to pick some different values of q and find what their profit is and what their marginal profit is. So first let's pick, uh, I have a straight edge, so I think I'll use it. Let's, let's pick a small value of q, let's see here. In order to calculate <coughs> the marginal profit at Q1, I need to draw a, a tangent line. And I'll draw my tangent lines using the color blue. So I need to draw a tangent line t here. Let me show you approximately where. I'm. So I need to draw a tangent line around the profit function here, which means I need to draw a, a straight blue line that touches the profit function right here and is tangent to the profit function. So as I said in the previous video, that means it's always above or always below the profit function except at that one point. So let me erase the preliminary marks that I drew and try to do a good job drawing the tangent line. So again, I am using a straight edge here but I'm doing this, I, the only way to do this is approximately. One can't do it exactly unless one knew actually the, the functional form of profit and then you, do, you knew calculus and you could take a derivative. So that's not what we're engaged in. Let's see if this is going to work. Uh, that's not too bad. So you can see that the blue line is above the black line except at the point where they touch. And so the question is, what is the slope of the blue line? And uh, it's certainly positive. I would say it's not, I, I, I would call a slope very large if it looked something like this. And I would call a slope very small, positive, but still very small, if it looks something like this. So the, the very large slope would be, if, if, if you have um, units on the axes, you can actually calculate what the rise over run is. But basically, this, the first line that I drew, this line here, has a very large positive slope. And line number two has a very low positive slope, it means the slope is close to zero. The The line that I'm looking at right now, this, um, doesn't seem to have a slope that's either really large or really small. 
so I'm going to say that um, in, in, a, in a somewhat arbitrary way, because we don't have any numbers here, I'm going to I'm going to make it slope here. So that's supposed to represent a number that's neither very large nor very small, kind of a medium positive number. Okay, now let's pick another value of q and do the same exercise. And I understand at this point I'm not explaining why I care about marginal profit. That comes later. Okay, so let me do the same exercise again. I'm going to draw a tangent line, which is which should pass through this point, and should be um, in this case everywhere above this the um, the black line. Let's see if this is going to work. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Um, so on Q2, the tangent line that I've drawn is flatter than at Q1. And a flatter tangent line means a smaller marginal. So the I'm going to be trying to draw something here that is marginal profit for Q2. And the appropriate thing to draw there is going to be something that's less than marginal profit at Q1. Because this blue line is flatter than this one. So the, the, the blue line has become flatter, and so marginal profit has gotten smaller. So let me do that. Here I'm drawing a number which is still positive because the blue line at Q2 still has a positive slope, but it's not as positive as the blue line at Q1, and so the marginal profit at Q2 is, is smaller than at Q1. Okay, let me do it again. Change my uh, ink. Okay. So now I want to draw, I'm going to try to get right at the peak of profit, right at the profit maximum. Call it Q3. So draw a tangent line. Now, um, the tangent line, let me draw something up inside. So here's the geometry. And I'm trying to draw the tangent line right at the peak. Uh, I'll show different incorrect ways of doing it. This is wrong. Because to the left, the tangent line is above the black line, and to the right, it's below. But you want the tangent line to all, either always be above or always be below. This is also incorrect. Because to the right, the blue line is above the black, and to the left, it's below the black. So you, you need to try to get the, the, the blue line to be everywhere above or everywhere below the black line. So, so let me erase the incorrect ones. The only way to draw a correct one is like this. In other words, it's horizontal. Now you see it's correct because the blue line is above the black line, both on the left and on the right, except at the point where they touch. So the correct way to draw a tangent when you're looking at the peak of a function is to draw it horizontally. So now let me go back to my main diagram, and at Q3, the appropriate tangent at this point should ought to be horizontal. There. Um, actually, I didn't draw that quite right. Let me try it again, a little higher. Okay, I think that's better. To get the marginal, so I have the tangent line. I had now I want to draw the marginal. In other words, I need to get I need to get the this value here. Well, the marginal is the slope of the tangent line I just drew. The tangent line I just drew is horizontal. Horizontal lines have a zero slope because the rise over run is zero over run. 
because there's no rise, and 0 divided by anything is 0. So the slope of the line I just drew is 0, and therefore the marginal profit of Q3 is going to be 0. So I draw a dot at 0 at Q3. Okay, let me do it again. Uh, let's see which point am I going to take. Uh, let me take, let me, let me, uh, uh, let's take this point over here. Okay, Q4. Draw the tangent line. Okay, so I think the tangent line will be like, uh, this is a, it's a little hard to draw this tangent line correctly. I think that's it. Yeah, let me try again. Okay. That has a negative slope. And so when I try to draw the marginal profit for Q4, I'm going to be drawing something over here in the negative region because marginal profit at Q4 is negative. How negative? Well, I mean, this line doesn't seem to be extremely steep. It's just kind of moderately steep. So I think I'll draw it over here. Some kind of moderate negative number. Not really, really negative, but not really close to zero either. Now, remember I said that the blue line needs to be either everywhere above or everywhere below the function in order to be a tangent line? So it, it's above the function here and it's above the function here. Well, how about the fact that it's below the function over here? That does not make this blue line illegitimate. The blue line needs to be either everywhere above or everywhere below the function around the point you're interested in, that is around Q4, around here. What happens way out here is not relevant. So that doesn't disturb the fact that I've drawn a, a correct tangent line, or at least a tangent line that's as correct as I'm able to draw it. OK, so let me erase those dots. OK, um, how about uh, another example? Let's take this point. Draw a tangent line. Um, that's kind of interesting. This tangent line looks almost parallel to the one at Q4. This is, label, let me label the point as Q5. This really, um, that's a coincidence, but it, as far as I can tell, it's parallel to the tangent line at Q4, which would mean that the marginal profit at Q5 is exactly the same as the marginal profit at Q4. It, so, that's the way I've drawn it down there. It's, it's, uh, it hasn't changed. Um, that's unusual, and I wasn't really planning on that, but that's the way it turned out. How about at the trough of profit? In other words, right at the minimum point. So let me draw that. call that Q6. So I want to draw the tangent here. Well, the geometry, it's a trough, and the correct way to draw the tangent at a trough is actually the same way that you draw a tangent at a peak. It's going to be horizontal. So moving over to the main diagram, 
the correct way to draw the tangent line at Q6 is going to be get this right. I'm working with my straight edge here. He wants to slip. Okay, like that. And to get the marginal profit, you ask, what is the slope with the tangent line? Well, the slope of a horizontal line is 0. And so at Q6, the marginal profit is going to be 0. How about... And I'm almost done. I'll just take a few more, a few more examples. Um, how about over here? Q7. Draw the tangent line. Is that? So that's now become positive again. Um, not extremely steep, kind of a modest positive number. It, it looks kind of like... So this slope looks about the same as this slope here, which is the slope of Q2. So if I take... If I move Q2 over, then I think I'll get... I think I want to draw a, a black dot right around there. So let me erase the yellow marks I've made. And draw a black dot about at the height where Q2 is. Uh, what else? I have another peak, and economists are really interested in peaks and troughs because profit maxima and profit minima are important points. So here's a peak. Let me draw the draw the draw draw the Q value, Just Q8. The tangent line, well of course that's a peak, so you know that the tangent line is going to be horizontal. The slope of that's going to be zero, and so for marginal profit I am back to zero again. And then finally, let me do a little bit of erasing. Finally, I'll draw a uh, uh, let's say call it Q9 here here. Q9. Draw, draw the tangent line, which is roughly here, and ask what slope this has. It has a negative slope. Um, I think it's approximately this slope is about the same as this slope, which is which was about the same as this slope. So in other words, it looks like Q9 has about the same marginal profit as Q, let's say this is Q4 and Q5. So I'll repeat that. Q9 has about the same margin profit as Q4 and Q5. So Q9, Q, Q4 and Q5, so here's Q9, about the same as Q4 and Q5. So if you connect the dots, this is what margin profit looks like, more or less. Clearly, that's totally different than what total profit looks like. Now, why do we care about marginal profit? The firm wants to go here. That's the best place for the firm. That is here, where marginal profit is equal to zero. It turns out that it's often easier to work with marginals than it is to work with totals. To work with marginal revenue, to work with marginal cost, to work with marginal profit, instead of working with total revenue, total cost, and total profit. 
imagine that we didn't have the top graph. We only, the, in other words, the graph of profit. We only had the bottom graph, that is, the graph of marginal profit. Having the top graph, it's easy to see that the firm wants to produce a Q3. But if we only had the bottom graph, how do we know where the firm wanted to produce? Well, we know because, at least we have an idea, because we know that where profit is a maximum, a point like this, margin profit is going to be zero. And so we don't really need the top graph. If we just had the bottom graph, that's enough to know that Q3 is at least a potential point where the firm wants to go. Now in Econ 4010, we worry about situations like Q6 and Q8. In Q6 and Q8, marginal profit is also zero, but they aren't profit maximizing points. Q6 is a local profit minimizing point. Q8 is a local profit maximum, but profit is still negative there, and it's a lot lower than it is at Q3. Right? The, you have a lot of profit at Q3. At Q8, this is the amount of profit you have, which is actually negative. Here's the axis, and so this is actually this is actually negative profit here. So, so in Econ 4010, we worry about cases like uh, Q6 and Q8. And so we don't just use a rule like go to where marginal profit is equal to zero. But in this class, we're not going to worry about these kind of situations. In this class, I'm going to keep things simple and give you simple enough situations so that if you have a marginal graph and you find where marginal profit is equal to zero, that's going to be where the profit maximum is. There might be a few cases where in class that's not true, but it's, it's always going to be true on exams. I'm never going to give you something this complicated on an exam. On an exam, I'm only going to give you situations where if you're trying to find maximal profit, all you have to do is look for the place where marginal profit is zero. And that'll be the, ma the maximal profit place. So in other words, on your exam, if marginal profit is equal to zero, then profit is going to be a maximum on your exams. So clearly, I mean, the reason I say on your exams is because that's not always true. Even in this graph, in Q6 and Q8, that's not true. But on your exams, I will try to keep things simple. Well, let me say it again. On, on your exams, I will keep things simple. If I ever happen to write an exam question which doesn't have this property, I will tell you on the exam. Be careful. Uh, this is a point where marginal profit is zero, but profit's not maximized. But I'm not going to expect you to be able to figure out then what the firm should do. That's an Econ 4010 question for intermediate micro. That's not a question for you guys. So as all you have to know is that for the simple situations that you're going to see on your exams, margin profit being zero goes along with profit being a maximum. Finally, I, I thought I should make this line a little bit darker. Let me just draw over it because we've drawn a lot of other lines here and you might find it hard to see what the pattern is. There we go. So here's the axis. A profit equals zero axis. And here's a prof profit function we were dealing with. So now you can see how important this point is. That's the this point is the maximal profit point. It gives the is the highest value of profit. And because its geometry looks like this it has a horizontal tangent and therefore it has a zero marginal profit. So I hope that explains better what the relationship is between profit and marginal profit and, and why we care about zero marginal profit. Again I'll repeat one thing that I said in the beginning which is that 
this example works even if you did, if you don't call it profit. I could have just called the black function f of x, and then the marginal would be the marginal of f of x. And f of x could be anything. It could be revenue, it could be cost, it could be profit, it, it could be anything at all. So essentially uh, what I've shown you is a mathematical exercise, but economists are particularly interested in it because we are often looking to where marginal profit is equal to zero.